Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to what would happen if you detonated a nuclear bomb in the Marianas Trench. Now, the Marianas Trench, I believe, is the deepest point on planet Earth, I think. You know, it's uh, the pressure, the water pressure down there. I don't think any human being has been down there. I'm not sure about that. You know, it's pitch black. And I, I wonder, because it's such a deep crater, if we if we put a nuke in there, would it create like a, a massive crack in, you know, the, the continental shelf? Like what would happen? In a nutshell is probably my favorite or it's in the top three favorite channels of mine on YouTube. They do such an amazing job of explaining and breaking down very complicated topics. And I'm sure this, uh, this video is gonna be of amazing quality and interest. So let's do it. What would happen if we detonated humanity's most powerful nuclear weapon at the deepest point of the ocean? For sure, tsunamis hundreds of meters high would destroy coastal cities, earthquakes would level countries, new volcanoes would bring us nuclear winter. Maybe even Earth could be ripped apart or thrown out of orbit. Well, almost. Currently, Earth's deepest known point is inside the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is a very deep valley right at the edge of two tectonic plates that looks like an upside-down mountain. It reaches a depth of about 11 kilometers, almost three times deeper than the dark grave of the Titanic. Crazy. It's one of the last places on Earth for humans to explore. Pitch black and under a thousand atmospheres of pressure, it's a relatively pristine environment. A thousand atmospheres? What does that mean, though? Thanks to the absence of humans, a great place for our nuclear test. We'll use the most powerful nuclear bomb humans have ever exploded, the RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, or Tsar Bomber. Its explosion was so massive that its shockwave traveled around the Earth three times and its mushroom cloud stretched 56 kilometers into the sky. Its shockwave was strong enough to destroy everything in a thousand square kilometers, its fireball hot enough to burn the rubble. Bombs like this release such an enormous amount of energy at once that they could boil away an entire lake. Crazy. And if we set off a nuclear bomb in the Mariana Trench, that's exactly what happens. Let's pull the trigger. In the first few microseconds, the nuclear fuel undergoes its chain reaction and explodes with the power of 50 megatons of TNT. A blinding flash of light illuminates the darkness of the trench for the first time in history. The heat of the explosion produces a cavity, a flaming bubble of water vapor, radioactive nuclei, and the remains of very unlucky fish. Oh my God. The bubble grows quickly as it vaporizes the water around it. The pressure of the bubble is immense, plowing outwards as if there's nothing in the way, sending off a shock wave that will be felt by seismic stations and whales around the world. And but I, because but because the the trench is so deep and there's so much water above it, is the is that ball of of, of fire going to have enough power behind it to get through? I suspect that the water is going to. Because the water is the opposite of fire, right? I think it's going to win overall because there's much more water. And then, almost as fast as it emerges, it stops. On the surface of the Earth, this fireball bubble would grow to 10 kilometers the second after it's detonated wow. as the atmosphere barely puts up a fight to hold it back. 10 kms. But the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench is enormous. With 11 kilometers of water overhead, being in the Mariana Trench is like being crushed by a hydraulic press from every direction. Oh my God. Here, a second after the detonation, our bubble is about a kilometer across, when, oddly enough, it starts to shrink. Mm. The bubble overextends itself, losing pressure as it expands until the water turns it back, recompressing it. The tug of war between the fiery death bubble and water goes back and forth a few times, the bubble shrinking and growing until eventually the bubble loses for good. The pressure around it is too great and turbulent water begins to chop it up. It becomes something like the underwater equivalent of a mushroom cloud as it disintegrates into many smaller hot and radioactive bubbles drifting upwards. Mm, that would and as good. our mighty destructive blast rises to the surface, it does basically nothing. 
just a small wave and a bubbling plume of radioactive warm water in the Pacific. No tsunami will wash away Japan or California, although boats and whales in the area might have a bad time. The radioactive fallout will be diluted into the Pacific after a few days, although a fair amount of radioactive water and salt makes it to the atmosphere, where it collects and then rains down again. Even if the wind blows the fallout directly towards the Philippines, the worst of it probably happens over the oceans. But clear <laughs> I love the Godzilla reference. Did you see that? Hold on a sec. The worst of it probably happens over the oceans. But clearly, the real danger comes from our explosion triggering earthquakes and volcanoes, right? Even if we detonated the bomb right in the trench at the exact point where tectonic plates touch, probably not. The explosion would vaporize a part of the sea floor and turn a lot of sand into glass, but most of the energy goes into the water, not seismic waves. Earthquakes are already quite common at tectonic plate boundaries and earthquakes with as much seismic energy as our bomb happen a few times a year without triggering any sort of apocalypse. But maybe it will affect the Earth's orbit. Since no mass is taken away or added to the Earth, our orbit is completely unaffected. Also, wow, there have been so, well over... So basically, it's not really lived up to the suspected destructive power that we thought. I kind of thought it'd be a bit more destructive, but yeah, I suspected that the water would keep keep really keep it at bay for a thousand nuclear tests in the last 70 years and that didn't change our orbit so why would this time be different the strongest forces humanity can unleash are laughable compared to the forces of nature the planet is too big it doesn't care so what happens to us if we detonate a nuclear weapon really deep in the ocean pretty much nothing <laughs> Did you know that every bird in our videos has an owner? More than 1,000 people have got their own bird. It helps us explain things. Fantastic video. I mean, just the production level, the level of, you know, clear, concise explanation. It's just at the, at the top. Yeah, as I, said, as I said in the video, like, I didn't, sus I suspected that maybe there'd be like some earthquakes around because of the, you know, the, the, the deepness of the bomb and the, uh, you know, the, the force that potentially could maybe push the, the, the plates aside. But no, like in terms of the actual size of, I think we underestimate the size of the planet. It's so big, like you, you probably need a thousand of those bombs really to kind of, to kind of, you know, really affect the planet on, on a macro scale. But yeah, very, very, like, such a great video. I, I need to watch more of their stuff because they're, they're just so good. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.